everyone. Sorry I've been putting out the videos that I wanted to put out this year, but breaking my ankle has just made it a little bit awkward to get around. But hopefully I'll get back on track now. So the first thing is I got an email this morning regarding pinecone scales, making them up. So obviously I've done one where I've actually got the pinecone ready, put it into the block, uh, and then added the resin. Uh, I'll put a link to that one below in the in the um, comments. Uh, but how do we go about making sure that the pine cone itself is ready for pouring into the resin? So first thing you need to do is make sure they are completely dry. So first job, if you're collecting them yourself, put them into a, a box with a heat element in there or with uh, or into a, an airing cupboard that's nice, warm and dry and just leave them there for, the, for a quite a long period of time. So if you're just collecting them up, I'd make sure you put them in there for a few months or whatever. Uh, you can get hold of them uh, that have already been dried out. Uh, if you can, then you can move on to the next step, which is basically to make sure that you get that last bit of moisture out of them, you need to bake them. So what I'll do is I'll put these in the oven and I'll put them in there for about anywhere to between three and five hours, something like that. If I was using a block of wood that I wanted to dry out then to make sure it's fully dried out, I'd probably put it in for about 12 hours at around about 100 degrees. It just makes sure it gets it warm all the way through and starts getting that moisture out of it. But because pine cones are not much to them, a few hours should do them. Once I've done that, make sure I've cooled it down again and then I'll put it into a resin hardener. Uh, I'll show that in a little bit once I've gone through this process, but basically what I use is a, uh, is a hardener called Cactus Juice, which is a, a, a basically a, a thermoreacting uh, hardener. So basically, once again, once you've got the resin into the actual pine cone, then you bake it again for a few hours. I think it's about 93 degrees C. I'll put it up for about 100 because it, I think it just works that little bit better. Again, for about three hours take it out and I'll rinse it out with a bit of acetone just to get, basically to get any residue off the surface uh, and I found that that works better for when you're pu actually putting it into the resin. Uh, so like I said, first thing we'll do is stick it into the oven. So the oven I'm going to use is my heat treating oven. There's no specific reason, you can just use a normal oven, it's just find it easy to use in the garage here. So pine cones in, close it all up, switch it on. I've already got this program set for three hours at 100 degrees, which is the same that I use when I bake them as soon as they come out of the hardener. So all I need to do is recall program seven and stand by, run, enter, and leave that to go. So like I say, that'll be running for three hours at 100 degrees. Then I'll leave it just to cool down. Once I've left them to cool down enough, then I'll tr transfer them into my vacuum chamber and get all the air out of the actual pine cones. So that's it now, the oven is up to temperature and all I need to do is leave it for the countdown to get back down to zero and for the pine cones to cool down then I can swap them over but in the meantime switch the alarm off. So while the pine cones are drying out uh, I'll just give you a bit of a rundown on what else I've got going on. So obviously I've got the Northern Shooting Show coming up in May so I need to get some stuff sorted out for that. I've got loads of blanks, I've got loads of stuff heat treated so I'm going to be working my way through them, putting handles on, sorting sheets out so I can take them. A uh, couple of other things that I've got uh, I'm going to try out is I've made a couple of, oops, dropping that one, a couple of uh, blanks, a couple of silhouette sort of things for making uh, a zipper. So what this is, is for when you want to take the skin off a deer uh, it'll have a blunt end on it and then the blade section is in the centre there. So what you'll do is stick it underneath the skin, push it forward, you've got no um, no chance of actually cutting any of the meat and it'll just split the skin open. So I've been asked for a, one of those or asked about them and I said that I was going to try making a, a couple so uh, that plan's on the way. Uh, another one that I've got is I'm making a dispatcher for a, a falcon again but I've done a slight variation on it. So. This is the cutout for it, uh, and what I've done is I've, I've made that bit a little bit longer, so you've got a, a little bit of a finger guard. Rather than putting a, a full guard on it, just raise it, it's just taking it out slightly. Again, this one's going to go into a Kydex sheath, so hopefully this section here should help it pin in the Kydex sheath a little bit more. Uh, I've already cut it out, uh, and I've already started on it. I've flattened its sides down to 320 grit. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a start of a bevel on it, 
not a, a full bevel because I'm going to just send it away for heat treating first. I only take the sort of like first section off just to get the corners off it. Get that sent off for heat treat and then as soon as that back I can start putting that back together. This one's going to have a sort of toxic green um, scales on it. So it's again if you put it down on the floor it makes it nicely stand out. Uh, been trying a few different more uh, pinecone scales. Got to take this one out of the block. Uh, I'll take it out and I'll let you see what it looks like. Uh, the other thing I've got is this is the last little bit of it. Uh, I've tried some Damascus steel. Now this is a carbon Damascus. I've got managed to get a couple of blades out of it and a, a short one that I'm going to sort out. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the pattern on it. There we go. Uh, so those are already cut out. They're already drilled. They're in a similar position to what this one is. You can't tell at the minute that it's got any Damascus on it at all because when you flatten the sides off it just seems to all disappear and it all just turns back into sort of like normal steel. It's not until you etch it and you start getting the patterning back on it that you'll be able to see. So, like I say, they're all drilled. Just need to put the edge on it. I've got a gilly long that I'm going to be doing. I'm putting a Scandinavian grind onto that one and I'm also doing a row stoker and I will be putting a um, sort of like a semi-flat grind on that with a, a secondary bevel. So, hopefully I'll have those done soon enough and I'll be able to put them out there. So, what I'll do, I'll leave you at that, I'll get wait till the pine cones are dried out and then I'll show you the process of what I'll do once I've um, put them into the hardening resin and the vacuum chamber. Alright, I'll see you in a bit. There we go, that's how it turned out. Uh, once they're polished up, they should look quite stunning. But see if the customer likes them. Uh, and if so, they'll be going on to a Gilly Long. Right, so the pine cones are now fully dried out. They're back to room temperature. Now it's time to put it in the stabilising resin. Uh, the one that I use is this Cactus Juice uh, from America, but we have the, a UK importer now that I see, which is metal and clay. I'll put links in details below. This has got to be used, it's well, it's a thermo reacting uh, resin. So basically, once this is finished, uh, once I've finished putting it into the pine cones, I'll put it back in and bake it for another. Oh, you've got it de details are down on here. So uh, I think it's 93, there we go, 93 degrees C for two to three hours. Got to make sure that you keep it below 29 degrees C. So that's one of the reasons why you've got to make sure that the pine cones have cooled down. Otherwise, it'll start reacting with the resin and it'll, it'll just knacker it all up. So what I'm going to show you now is swapping the pine cones into the resin, getting the vacuum chamber going and you'll see the air being sucked out of the pine cones themselves. Right, let's go. So this is my setup for vacuuming. I did get one of the cheaper sets off eBay, but all I ended up doing was leaving it on too long and burning my pump out. The top that comes with the actual tank is, over time, it ends up cracking. So I've tried sealing it, but as you can see, it just crack comes through and the air starts leaking in through the cracks. You can actually see it sink in when it, the vacuum comes on. The seals came off from the sides, so trying to update it, but or trying to fix it rather, it just didn't work, so I ended up swapping it over. So all I did was buy a, an inch thick piece of Perspex, swapped over the gauge and the valves, bought myself a new pump, that's um, a bit more uprated, uh, capable of uh, leaving it on for a long periods of time without it burning out, and just a piece of rubber uh, as a valve. The only thing that I have to do is just push it down slightly on the top, just so it gets that first seal, but then it starts working fine. So let's get the top off this one and swap over the pine cones. One of those things that you need to do is make sure that you're wearing gloves whenever you're using resins or anything like that. You don't want it going into, into your skin. So pine cones in, as you can see there, the float, as most woods will. Uh, and what you need to do, weigh it down. So I'll put a bit of metal on the top of it and I'll put a couple of sockets on just to hold them down. Uh, like I say, make sure you wear your gloves, but I don't want it all over the 
lid, so put that on, get that in there, just line it up, make sure it's all sealed, happy with that, close that valve, change the light over there, see if we can get it a better view. So I'll switch it on, obviously the vacuum's not working properly as yet, all I need to do is just press it down, raise that up, you can see the vacuum's coming on and you can see all the air bubbling out of the pine cones. Just watch that for the time being, because the last thing you want it to do is bubble up so much that it ends up going through your pipe work and into your pump, because the resin will just knack your pump up. So the pine cones now are just sitting in the resin. So what's happened is the air's all been vacuumed out of them and then the pine cones have been left for the resin to then seep back into the pine cones. So hopefully they should all be now, any void should be now full of the resin. So what I'll do now is take the weights off. And then just, I've got a bit of wire. So I'll take the pine cones out and I'll just let them drain out. Get rid of any excess off the surface. There we go, just leave them a little while. Then what I'll do is I'll wrap them up in some, uh, I'm going to say cling film then, but some silver foil. Okay. Uh, unlike when you're doing uh, wooden blocks, you can wrap it up quite tight. Obviously you can't do that with a pine cone, you'll just end up crushing them. So what I'll do is I'll just cover the top, I don't wrap them up too much at the bottom, because when I put them into my tray, I put them at an angle, so if there still is any excess residue, it, it does allow it to come out. These will go straight into the oven next, once I've got these out of them. So I'll just I reuse my paper, so, or the tin foil rather, no point wasting it. these and basting trays that you can use so all I'll do is I'll just set them just so that they're a slight angle there we go put them into my oven same again uh, 300 degrees it's not 300 degrees three hours at 93 degrees leave them there for well, well once the three hours is up then I'll leave them to cool down then I'll take them back out of the oven and I'll show you what they look like Last job then will be just to give them a rinse off with a bit of acetone. While they're doing, take those off, I've got some leather sheaths to sort out. So what I've been doing, uh, these are all glued together, I've got the holes all in for the stitching and basically I've got this coney, not a coney, it's a gilly long with a pine cone resin handle funnily enough. So this one's been done in sort of a white, uh, white resin I've got a load of different dyes so I can try a few different colours but that one's the first one I've sorted. Uh, Acid Edge Blade 01 Tool Steel on that one. Uh, again another one that I've done in resin but this time um, a piece of burl, a bit of piece of, uh, basically an end piece of the wood that you can't really use for anything else. Cut it into pieces, put them into a, a mould and then put the resin in there and this one's got sort of like a dark red resin to them. And the last one I've got for a sheath is, well, that one's a Coney Catcher. That one's Owen Tool Steel with, again, another Acid Etch blade on it. And then I've got another Coney Catcher. This one, though, is a stainless steel blade. Uh, slightly different, I've put a orange, an orange G10 handle scales on. Um, steel pins on it. But what I've done with the actual handle is I've gone over it with uh, some bead blasting and I've tried to rough it up slightly so it gets a little bit of the texture out so it just gives you a little bit more grip rather than being a smooth handle so I've got to show, try those out. So I'd say get these into the oven and then I'll show you what they're like in a few hours time. Right the pine cones are now out of the oven and they're all cooled off so take them out. There we go, all done and dusted. You can see where there's bits of resin on the out of them. And they, like I say, they get a little bit of a film on them. So what I'm gonna do to that, 
in these cans I've just got a bit of acetone give them a bit of a rinse out there we go and all I do now is just leave that bit of newspaper just so the um, drain off get the others done there we go as you can see, even though they've been in liquid, they're still open. Again, just give them a rinse down. I'm finished off. Rinse it out. Sometimes you have a bit of hardened resin just on the outside of them, uh, but once you're ready to use them, you just break that off and just clean them up a bit. So, there we go. That's them all done and dusted. Put that away. And that's my next set of pine cone handles or whatever you're going to do with them. So if you're using large pine cones you can even sort of make them as um, turning blocks, put them on the lathe, make boxes and tubes and what have you out of them. But there we go, that's them stunned and dusted and I'll just leave them until, until I need them. Right, uh, if you like the video please like and subscribe and I'll see you later. Thank you very much, bye.